And Naimi has said repeatedly that the hundred dollars a barrel is a very good price for everyone. So in, in a way, uh, this is what we have seen. Okay, and they have been doing that for quite a while. They finally got to where, what they wanted, where, where they wanted. They wanted to really become the force to really bring balance to the market and, and make decisions that will uh, result, uh, translate into the, what they want to see. And, and this is what, it, what has been happening for quite a while. If you look at the inner Saudi Arabia feelings, you will probably find that they would, be, they would enjoy very much uh, seeing Iran, for example, uh, suffering under sanctions, uh, and uh, keeping them at bay. Th they would enjoy very much also keeping uh, the Arctic development and Putin at bay, from, especially now, you know, you see the, the appetite of, of, of Putin. The Arctic will start to suffer. It, 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 the Arabs could, the Saudis could uh, su sustain 70, even $65 a barrel. But, uh, and, and if they would let the price go down, not only, I said already Putin, I said, uh, but also the Canadian sands and also uh, the subs uh, subsalt in Brazil, and, and maybe even a lot of the uh, shale oil that we're seeing around. They don't go that way for a couple of reasons. First of all, because they have their colleagues in the uh, uh, Gulf Cooperating Council. I'm talking about Kuwait, uh, um, the Emirates, and Oman, which is not a member of OPEC, but they belong to this club called the Gulf Cooperation Council, and they have to protect also these guys who support them along the years. They have supported them, and they support them as, as we go along. And second, because uh, the Arab Spring left a lot of concerns about the balance in all the countries in the Middle East, and certainly in Saudi Arabia, which is uh, one of the most populous ones. Uh, it's about 30 million people, so they have to deal with all these pressures and the and the Wahhabis and uh, the uh, religious groups. So they really have to uh, really... Uh, keep the cash that they have. They have built a lot of cash. They have accrued a lot of cash. But they still have to behave uh, along that way. Now, for how long can this happen? For how long can... Well, I, I would say that uh, what we're seeing now is a, a pressure uh, because there's some oversupply. And uh, we're seeing that it's not 110 and 100. It's more like 103 and uh, 97. But still, I guess the, the Saudis are still happy. And the big question is, how are we, uh, if prices would drop, how, first of all, how would uh, OPEC react, and the Saudis specifically, and how would the industry react? 85% of the capital compromise, com um, committed, sorry, what I want to say, uh, committed to, for development of oil in the world has a break even of around 70, $75 a barrel. The rest, the uh, remaining 15% uh, uh, may have um, more like between 80 and 90. So there we can see who can begin to, to suffer uh, first. Uh, I guess uh, the first group, uh, the 85%, the are really uh, thinking about an attractive proposition. Uh, maybe the second group is more like hoping for a good action from OPEC. So uh, this is the kind of challenge that we're going to be facing. So it's difficult to say what will happen with the price always has been, uh, but nowadays, of course, uh, we are more concerned about what uh, the Saudis can do, especially with the uh, large investments in, in shale.